In this video, I will analyze the film of the kamikaze attack on the USS Louisville on January 5, 1945. She was part of a shore bombardment group heading to Lingayen Gulf, detailed in my video, Lucky Lady Lou. From the deck of the USS Salamaua, the Louisville is 1.4 miles away in the center of the frame. The Aussie destroyer Arunta is about four miles further out. Two low-flying aircraft heading west to approach the task group from out of the sun are being targeted by the five-inch battery of the outer destroyer screen and the Louisville. The time is just before 1700. Minutes before the attack began, two destroyers left the inner screen, leaving a big hole on the left side of the formation, which may have been exploited. All three planes used the destroyers to screen themselves from the anti-aircraft fire of the heavy ships. On being hit, the Lou sheared out of column to port, several ships reporting her out of control. The destroyer Loitza followed to assist. Did you see that? The engine block rose to twice the height of the foremast, over 300 feet, before splashing down off the Lou's starboard beam. More amazingly, the pilot got out of his cockpit, ran across the wing, and jumped before his plane hit the number two turret. Did he make it all the way to the end? Yes, he did. Want to see it again? Here's a close-up view, stabilized, degrained, and sharpened. This film was provided without any information on camera type. If the pilot ran across the wing, the plane had to be going slow. We can determine the plane's speed by figuring out the frame rate. But how? Time the engine block in its freefall? No, it went out of frame, so we don't know how high it really got. Time the splash to freefall? Uh, no, we don't really know how far away it is. Time the pilot's run off the wing? That would assume we know how fast he really was. So instead, let's focus on the film camera models assigned to combat units in World War II. By far, the most likely camera used was the IMO. It had preset frame rates of 48, 32, 24, 16, 12, and 8 frames per second. It also shot 35mm film, the same format as the historical film you just saw. The industry standard at the time was 24 frames per second, but by running slower, the cameraman would not have to change film as often. For more information, see the wiki page cited below. To determine the proper frame rate, I will use two things I know for sure. The length of the ship, 600 feet, and the speed she was moving at when the attack occurred, which was 15 knots or 17 miles an hour. The details are shown below, but basically I select from the film 35 frames showing the terminal approach of the plane, and every seventh frame I will measure the distance of the front of the plane to the front of turret 2 where it impacted. I then calculate how much time elapsed during those seven frames for each frame rate, then calculate the speed of the plane relative to the ship by taking the distance measured and dividing it by the time elapsed. I then add the speed of the ship to get the airspeed of the plane. Here is frame 67. I scale each image to fit the ship's hull inside the white box. The plane's movement will be confined to the red box with red arrows indicating its position. At this point, the plane is 204 feet from the face of turret 2. Next is frame 74. The plane has approached to within 165 feet of turret 2. 
the distance covered between frames 67 and 74 is 204 minus 165, which equals 39 feet. For each frame rate, the airspeeds are calculated as shown. Next is frame 81. The distance traveled between this frame and the last is 43 feet. Note, my ruler has a three foot margin of error for its smallest increment. And now frame 88. The distance traveled is 40 feet. Note, the pilot has left the wing. And now frame 85. The distance traveled is 39 feet. Note, the plane is side slipping and the gear is almost all the way down. Finally, frame 102, impact. Note, the last three speeds have been dropping fast. For each frame rate, I now compute an average airspeed from the four I've determined. The results are 24 frames a second, average airspeed 112 miles per hour, a crosswind that is very likely too fast for the pilot to make it to the end of the wing. And he would have had to cover that span, 18 feet, in half a second. 16 frames per second, 80 miles per hour, that's doable. 12 frames per second, 64 miles per hour, that's doable too. But I note that the stall speed of the A6M0 fighter is 60 to 65 miles per hour. So it looks like 24 frames per second is hard to justify, while 12 might be too slow. Is 16 the winner? Are there any other clues that could lock in the frame rate? Yes, there are. I now present the enhanced film at frame rates of 24, 16, 12, and 8 frames a second. Look at the action of the engine block and the splash it makes on touchdown and decide which looks most realistic. The Louisville's action report states that the zero that attacked her approached at 250 miles per hour. A determined attack would surely have come in at flank speed. Yet this low speed attack allowed the kamikaze pilot to exit his aircraft and jump, an act never before seen in the annals of combat photography. 
Motives cannot be reliably assigned, but I suggest that the plane, taking hits on approach to the carriers, forced the pilot to choose the Louisville as a high value target of opportunity. The action report sustains this, indicating that the planes attacking the Lou and the Arunta both swerved at the last minute, consistent with kamikaze doctrine at the time. But how to explain the low speed final approach? Two scenarios come to mind. One, the plane's engine was hit and lost power, forcing the pilot to glide into the Louisville. The drop in velocity on terminal approach was no doubt exacerbated by the gear dropping upon being hit and the plane side slipping after the pilot left the controls. His exit may have been spontaneous. Two, the pilot deliberately cut power on final approach, choosing an attack vector that would allow the plane to hit the ship while he, exiting off the left wing, missed it. He did pop his parachute, but it failed to fully deploy. See my video Lucky Lady Lou to find out his fate. This suggests a premeditated act. In any event, the pilot, a highly motivated individual, accomplished his mission. But did he give himself at the last moment a chance for rescue? We'll never know.